Thanks for joining us on this beautiful Wednesday. Thanks for coming and living the run. I'm your host, Rex Stevens, and the star of the show, co-host, former Olympian, Mr. Paul Tarek. How's it going this week, man? <laughs> it's another fantastic day here on the Central Coast, another fantastic day to live the run. Uh, how many people did you count coming over today, Paul, out there on the streets? It, w- it was a slow day. I did come the back way uh, out by Buckley Road and... Uh, Let's see, up Buckley, I think there were two joggers and one guy biking, and then down Broad Street, uh, there were there were a handful of people. So, you know, I, I wasn't in town, but uh, I was on the perimeter on the outskirts, and uh, still, there's always, there are always that's, that's what I love about living here, are there are always people basically telling you that you have no excuse, you have no reason why you shouldn't get out there as soon as you get home and get busy. Incredible show today. We're we're super looking forward to uh, a couple of guests here that that, that will uh, let you know what it really means to live the run. We got Jordan Hasse. You all know her, familiar name, Mission Prep Runner. She, she just finished uh, winning the Pac-10s there at University of Oregon. Took third in the national championships, and she'll be hitting up the Olympic trials here very soon in the 1500 meter. And then we got Judd Clark from Puma. He runs Puma, the coach there. He's got an exciting athlete with him out of Royal Grande High School, Zach Stevens. Uh, incredible kid, getting in the breaststroke, 15 years old, hitting the Olympic trials. Uh, Paul, how old were you when you hit the, the Olympic trials for the first time? 20, uh, 24, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. when, when uh, we were talking right before the show started, it's, uh, you know, it's so I, I think back to when I, was, when I was his age, and I no way had the focus, the drive, the dedication to do that. So it's... Uh, it's you know quite an accomplishment for him to get to that level. Yeah, incredible stuff. I'm I'm really looking forward to to talking to to Judd and Zach. You know, one thing that we talked about when we're talking about movement and getting out there is this one thing we see is his limitations of the mind. Paul, I thought the uh, U.S. Open, one of my favorite golf tournaments that happened this last week. It's you see how incredible mental focus is, and we see this with these Olympic athletes or potential Olympians that we're going to talk to today. You saw it in the U.S. Open where the golfers are all real similar in talent, but when things get tough. Some of them really fold up, and some of them rise to the occasion. And I know you've probably seen a lot of that kind of stuff in some big meets, uh, meets where maybe conditions weren't great, uh, meets where maybe guys just weren't feeling good, whatever, what have you. Uh, I, I remember, uh, I think it was uh, Randolph, the guy who was here a couple weeks ago, <laughs> talking about one meet where there was crosswinds, you know, trying to do a pole vault <laughs> where there's crosswinds, not what you really want, or, or you got tracks set up not, not quite appropriately where you're, you're not – you know you're not going to put up the times that you're used to doing, but being able to mentally focus and still get through those. Yeah, yeah. You know, when he talked about the crosswinds, and that, that's a that's actually a, it's a safety issue. It's not just like ah, my performance is going to be a little off. I mean, there's a lot of things that have to happen in the pole vault to, uh, uh, you know, to make just to make a bar, not let alone a good bar. And uh, one of them is just getting the pole in the box. You know, when you got a crosswind, you're carrying a 16 foot pole down the runway, and the wind's howling across. Uh, four or five meters per second, you know, it's blowing the tip left and you're trying to push it right while you're running and maintain speed and, and hit these positions. Uh, but like you said, you know, it's that, it's that dedication or the, the focus. Um, I, I think along with the confidence that goes with, uh, you know, doing it multiple, multiple times and having that experience. Uh, so I think we're going to, you know, we're going to hit on that today when we talk, uh, when we talk some swimming, you know, he's going to, he's going to have the opportunity to go to the meet, kind of see the show, all the bells and whistles and take it all in and, uh, you know, hopefully he has an incredible meet uh, this year. But uh, you know, coming up in the trials in the next, you know, four and eight years, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, it's going to be his first Olympic trials. And uh, our guest now on the show, uh, Jordan Hasse. This will be her second Olympic trials. Again, Jordan just had an, uh, another awesome year. Uh, Pac-10 champion in the 1500 meter. Uh, had, a, had a nice national champ, had a nail biter in that national championship run. I don't know if you saw that one, Paul. But uh, Jordan Hasse, thank you so much for uh, returning to Living the Run. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk with you guys. Well, you know, b- uh, before the show started, uh, Paul Tarek was talking about, uh, and you know, Paul, he was he was talking about a mean 1500 that he used to run. He was thinking that maybe he'd like to get on the track sometime in the off season uh, with you, Jordan. Once the uh, the trials are done and the Olympics are done, Paul's been training in that 1500 again. Jordan, don't don't let him instigate this. <laughs> I've conceded defeat. You 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 have me bested. I. I... <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to lose. You know what remaining dignity I have. You know, don't let Rex get you involved in this too. <laughs> That'd be great. We could just do a time trial. You know, at Cal Poly, people could come out. Oh, that'll be. Yeah. Watch, 
I, I agree. Let's put it. Let's put invitations out there. We can put them on the different Facebook pages uh, for all those Living the Run listeners. We got about two thousand on uh, our Living the Run Facebook page now, so I'm sure we could get a bunch of people out there. It would be a really a fun time. Jordan will just skate through to an easy like four ten. You know, four minutes, ten seconds, and I'll come through in about an hour and twenty. You know, like what's what's my split, Rex? Hey, Jordan, uh, let's talk about the season a little bit. I, one of the first questions I wanted to ask you is, is what's more difficult for you? Is it is it more difficult that last 50 or to 100 meters in the 1500? Or is it more difficult dealing with reporters who want to ask you poor questions after the event? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I had a little bit more of that last year when I finished eighth, but they still wanted to interview me. I was having a really bad meet, but um, this year, it wasn't... I uh, I did well, and that last 50 was really close in the NCAA championship, and um, it was it was a fun race, and um, gave it my best, and I was pretty pleased with the outcome. What, what kind of race do you like to run in that? Uh, you know, I know there's so many different things that happen, and some of the commentary in that race was is that it started off a bit slower. Uh, how do you deal with those types of things mentally when you go into some of these races? Do you like to start off with a quicker pace? How does the slow pace uh, mentally affect you? Can you can you feel it right off the bat? Do you start to change strategies when you get out there? Or do you, you kind of have a strategy when you go in and you just stick with it? Coach, coach has you doing uh, what he expects. You stay with it and uh, aren't as affected by what other people are doing. Right, yeah, we kind of, um, Coach gives us multiple strategies depending on what goes on, if it was a slow pace or a fast pace, um, and we kind of expected that it would be pretty slow. Normally championship races are pretty tactical, no one wants to take the lead, and that's kind of what happened, and uh, we debated whether or not I would take the pace after 800 if it was slow, but we decided that I was just going to give my kick a shot and wait till the last 150, which we figured most everyone would do. And um, that was probably the right decision because it was pretty windy that day. Um, and so it was, um, you know, sometimes you can have a really, really good race, but you just don't end up winning, and that was kind of the case. Um, I think that maybe if we ran the race 10 more times, it would have had 10 different winners. So it was just a really loaded field. Now, Jordan, when you go to the trials this year, each you know each section or each uh, you know you have your prelims and you have your heats. Each heat is going to be different because you know there's people that are in there you know that are going to be running the fat. They're not going to try to sit back and hope for something uh, you know maybe out kick it because that might be their last chance of the year. Uh, how does that affect you when you have to change your strategy because one race might be fast from the gun and the next race might be uh, a little slower. For most of the race, and then it's a big kick. Does that really does that affect you? Uh, you know, with your training or your plan for the next race, or how does that work? Yeah, you just kind of have to, like I said before, you have to plan for everything, and we'll have different race strategies depending on what goes on. Um, and we might say that I'll I'll take the pace that goes slow, or just wait around. But you just have to go in mentally preparing for each round and knowing that each round you're basically going to have to run all out if you want to make the final because, like you said, there's people coming up and gunning for your spot and people trying to run PRs, whereas maybe you kind of want to take it easy, but there's definitely no taking it easy until you make that final. Now, we we talked a little bit about the strategies out there that you have to respond to. In in a perfect scenario, what would you rather have? Uh, Would you rather have a race that's fast from the gun or a race that, uh, you know, kind of holds back and then lets you demonstrate your foot speed? Um, I'm definitely I'm definitely more of a strength runner, so it's to my advantage the faster that the race is. But I've definitely learned to um, improve my speed, and my speed is getting better each year at the end of the race. So I um, I don't mind either way, but I definitely um, I would hope that the race would go fast, and then I get more excited because I know that I can pretty much kick with anyone at the end, no matter what the pace but if it's faster then I can still kick the same pace but just um people will be a little more tired and I have that extra strength. Goals wise, uh coming into a season, we're talking to Jordan Hasse, a Pac Ten national champion in the or Pac Ten champion in the uh fifteen hundred this year, um at a University of Oregon and uh, of course your favorite mission prep runner. When you look at goals, um 
coming into a season, how do you evaluate the goals? I mean, I know most people would look at it and say, well, you, you, you evaluate by wins, but I know that there's a process. I know you've got to trust a process throughout the season to try to peak towards the end. What are some of those goals that you guys set? What are the timetables? What are some of the things that you guys are looking at outside of just wins and, and losses in a race? Right, yeah, we definitely don't look at the wins and losses. We just look at races as opportunities to – kind of show how the training is going and this year was obviously a really big year and we trained really hard and um we had a couple of shots at running at 5k's and was was, th- was thinking about doing that for the trials but um just didn't really end up working out in a race but i think that training wise that's where i'll be aiming towards down the road um but we're still aiming to peak at the trials and run a really fast 1500 and I definitely think that it's still in there so um, it's exciting. Now I remember we did an interview with you back when Ryan Ferran was with the show uh, one of the things we talked about is this is right after you went to Oregon and you were talking about there was you know it's just a different mentality training because the coach there is concerned you know he's he's not just a coach for college track and field he understands the importance of post-collegiate and, you know, world championship teams, Olympic Games. Uh, so now that you're experiencing that and you're going into, you know, you had to go through this whole season. You had the responsibility of uh, an indoor season and responsibility of, of a Pac-10 and responsibility of nationals. And on top of that, so you couldn't really peak for those meets, but you had to be competitive. Uh, how do you feel that you've transitioned from that and now into the Olympic trials, uh, you know, into the time for the Olympic trials? Yeah, I think it's gone really well. I mean, it's been it's definitely been a learning experience and it'll pay um dividends i think in four more years when i don't have to be a collegiate and run the collegiate um meets and i think it's just been it's it's difficult to have to run really well like you said at pac 12s and regionals and ncaa's and you definitely have to back off for those because there's people that are going to be more fresh than you because they're maybe not aiming for the Olympic trials. But um, I trust Coach Lanana. He's uh, done this many times before, and he's gotten people ready for the end of the summer. And um, I put in really hard training early on, and I think that I'm still still in there. And we're just we just started doing speed a couple weeks ago, so we definitely. Um, Definitely, this has been on the radar for a long time. We're, t- we're talking to Jordan Hasse, again, University of Oregon runner uh, here on Living the Run, uh, ESPN 1280. You know, Jordan, I, we got Zach Stevens, who's going to be in uh, in studio in just a minute. It's going to be his first Olympic trials. Uh, you know, high school kid, going to be a junior in high school this next year, uh, swimming. One of the most exciting things I've ever seen in sport was is watching what transpired with you at the 2008 Olympic trials there in Eugene. Take you know, tell us a little bit uh, about that experience, but then how you think maybe that set you up for this second experience or this second run uh, here at uh, the 2012 Games. Yeah, that was it. Was just a kind of a whirlwind. I didn't even know if I was going to get into the meet, and um, it it's just crazy how quickly the four years have gone by and it was kind of funny because I went to get my credential today and then I was remembering four years ago how I had a hard time getting it uh, because I didn't even have my driver's license yet (laughs) so I didn't have an ID and um, so it's just it's just pretty crazy because I didn't really know what to expect four years ago I didn't really follow any of the runners so I was just getting out there and running And it's a little bit different now. I follow everyone and uh, know all the times and such, but it's still the same mentality, just getting out there and giving it my best and um, just having fun with it. It's going to be a great crowd out there, and it'll be fun wearing the Oregon uniform this time um, since they asked me to do it last time. (laughs) So um, I'm just honored to be out there again. That's got to be pretty nice, you know, a little home field advantage for the Olympic trials. You know, there's not, well, you know, I'd like to say there's not a lot of people out there with that, but Oregon produces quite a few athletes. Uh, uh, I, I think there's, what, six, there, it's six or eight or something like this this year that are uh, uh, projected to do very well? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of us that are still training, so it's nice to have people around still. And then, of course, all the um, Oregon Track Club, the professional athletes that train here, um, are going to be out there too, so it's 
It's exciting. Is the fifteen hundred going to be where you stay, or I know there was the talk about the five thousand too. What are we going to see from uh, Jordan in the future? Um, I'm not sure. I will see how these Olympic trials go and see how fast they can run. I definitely feel like I still have room to improve in the fifteen hundred, and then. Um, we'll see. Training's gone really well this year as far as moving up to the better events, so um, that's probably where we're going in the future, but you never know if I run really fast, then maybe I'll stick with the 15. Jordan, good luck to you here in this next uh, week or two, uh, and then uh, hopefully here in the future. We'd love to touch base with you again after the the trials to just get a little recap if possible. But uh, gosh, awesome athlete. You're a ton of fun to talk to. You got one of the greatest smiles. For those of you who haven't seen any of the videos of her, some of the biggest smile. You had a huge smile in that race coming down in the pack tens, I believe that was. <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> it, it, kind of stunning. I mean, here you are. You're 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 cranking in the last hundred meters, and you look like you're uh, having the greatest time of your life uh, lo- <laughs> love seeing a smile like that thanks <laughs> yeah and thank you for having me and thanks to everyone back at home for their support and um yeah, thank you. It's exciting. Hey, hey, and I wanted to say, too, Jordan's academic performance is tremendous. Your first team uh, all packed 10 in that, too, 3.98 GPA, uh, doing it on all ends of the spectrum. Uh, Jordan, thanks so much for living the run, and uh, we'll check back in with you soon. Have a great Olympic trials. All right. Thank you so much. That was Jordan Hasse, one of our favorite local runners, just an incredible athlete, incredible person, uh, lives the run at the highest level. Fun, fun uh, kid. Check her out. Follow her, usatf.org. You can follow that. I'm sure there will be coverage on uh, NBC as well. Coming back, we got Judd Clark, coach of Puma, bringing in Zach Stevens, coming, getting ready for his first Olympic trials in the breaststroke. Should be a great, great interview. Don't miss it. We'll be right back. You're listening to Living the Run on ESPN Radio 1280 The Ticket. Folks, when it comes to the health of my teeth, I will not compromise, and neither should you. It's time you go where my wife and I go. Go see Dr. Ryan Ross. I get it. Not everyone loves a dentist, and heck, even a few of you out there are scared to death of these offices. Bad past experiences? Well, you ever had a bad haircut? How about a bad meal somewhere? You didn't stop getting your haircut, and you certainly didn't stop eating, so stop ignoring your teeth. Dr. Ross's gentle approach, calming demeanor, and office full of upbeat staff puts your dental fears to rest. Conveniently located in a great little house on Marsh Street downtown, Dr. Ross's office exudes the highest level of professionalism, mixed with an atmosphere much like your own home. Look, nobody's in a rush here. It's not a get them in, get them out atmosphere. Every time I'm in Dr. Ross's office, it's like I'm the only guy that matters. No distractions, just full focus on my oral health. If you're interested in the highest quality in dental care and want to walk out of the office every time with a smile, call Dr. Ryan Ross today, 541-5800. Hey guys, Paul Tarek from Living the Run here. As a former Olympian, there is only one place myself and fellow athletes go when it comes to chiropractic care on the Central Coast. With four chiropractors in the clinic, Slow Wellness Center is the largest, most comprehensive group of docs in San Luis Obispo County. I began seeing Dr. Rex Stevens back in 2005 for spinal adjustments to help maximize my performance, minimize my injury, and allow me to compete at my best. When the difference between a win and a loss can be just a fraction of an inch, perfect alignment in all joints is essential. One of the great things about the team at Slow Wellness is no matter where I had an issue, whether it was my spine, my foot, knee, wrist, or shoulder, they were always able to help. This team, made up of Dr. Rex and Molly Stevens, Dr. Sachs, and Dr. Bandolo, is sure to help you reach your health and fitness goals, too. If it's chiropractic care you need, go where I go, Slow Wellness Center. Check them out at slowwellness.com or call 543-8688. My name is Chris Randolph, and as a local track and field Olympic hopeful, I've been seeing Brian Quigley at Slow Wellness Center to help me with injury recovery during my season. Brian has not only helped me with some very extensive injuries, but has also educated me on the specifics of how my body moves when I compete. His knowledge and touch has helped me achieve personal bests in my competition and has also helped me in injury prevention. Becoming a wellness patient of his has helped me stop my injuries before they start, making time spent recovering shorter, leaving more time spent training for my goals. From injury prevention to wellness, Brian understands the patient and holistically helps them achieve their personal health-related goals. So check out Brian Quigley at peakperformancesLO.com and find him on Facebook and comment a response to this ad and get a complimentary 60-minute massage. 
Puma Aquatics Team offers year-round swim programming for novice, recreational, and competitive swimmers. For 16 years, Puma has developed some of the fastest swimmers on the Central Coast, as well as the nation. Puma has three convenient locations to choose from, providing programming for all of San Luis Obispo County. Puma offers swim assessments for new swimmers on Tuesdays and Thursdays at the Slow Kennedy Club, Atascadero Kennedy Club, and Arroyo Grande High School. For more information about Puma Aquatics, check out pumaswim.org. Join the Puma Pride and challenge yourself to reach new levels in your swimming. Puma Aquatics, where pride, passion, and persistence pay off. We're back with Living the Run. Awesome interview, huh, Paul? Jordan Hasse, always a Living the Run favorite, always a San Luis Obispo favorite, Central Coast favorite. The girl, uh, mentally, she's just got it as well as the physical. I, I love how upbeat she is all the time. Like, it doesn't matter. Even if it's, like she said last year, she had a bad race, and, and they still wanted to interview her. I'm sure her interviews were just still, you know, upbeat and excited, and uh, she gets disappointed. But the thing that's, I think, great about her, one of her greatest uh, strengths as, a, as an athlete is that no matter what the race is, she can walk away from it and, and you know, look forward to the next one. She can find the positives in it. And uh, when you're in a big meet, especially at the trials, you know, with the heats, uh, depending on when the heats are or the, or the maybe world championships, if she, might, she might have a terrible race and barely get through to the next round. Uh, but the thing about her is she's going to be able to take the positives away from it, recover, and do well in the next, you know, in the next heat, where a lot of athletes will just fold, you know, like, oh, I had a really bad race. Wait, that means my next one's going to be bad, and I'm not even supposed to be here, and then they just buckle. Yeah, mental focus is uh, for sure on her. She's very few limitations of the mind. She's fantastic athlete, and I'm telling you, if you didn't watch the Pac-10, or I say Pac-10, I know it's Pac-12. I know, I just, I just got educated on That's yeah. how I realized how old I am. I'm referring pa- it to like back in the day. Yeah, the Pac-12 championship, <laughs> her run down that home stretch, she's literally almost laughing and smiling. And it's still, you know, I mean, it's just incredible that uh, when she's gotten it out, she's still got that big smile on her face. Uh, which is pretty fun. You know, it t- talking about limitations of the mind, I was talking to Dr. Ryan Ross, who's a sponsor here of Living the Run this morning, and he says, hey, I got you beat. And we were talking about our kids riding bikes, and, uh, you know, I said my kids started riding bike, two-wheel bikes at three years old, and he says, you know, mine started at two. And How a bike measuring contest, Rex? Yeah, well, what what we wanted to talk about is, is it has nothing to do with, you know, how necessarily good your kid is, but more the limitations of the mind. What are possible, and when can we start things? And rather than being limited, hey, now I can't put my kid on a bike till they're five or six, uh, you, you can start earlier. There's things that we can do in health and fitness. There's goals in athletics that can be done. And that's what we're going to see uh, with uh, Zach Stevens here from Arroyo Grande High School. Here's a high school kid that's going to be coming in to the Olympic trials, uh, which is just phenomenal stuff when you talk about swimming. We think about the Michael Phelps. We think about these uh, kind of older guys that have put up some some big-time uh, numbers, big-time medals. And now we've got a 50. A 15, 16 year old who's qualifying uh, at these incredible times. I wanted to talk to first, you know, to his coach here, Jed Clark. Jed's been running uh, Puma for a while. Jed's a Living the Run fan. He's uh, supporting us, uh, sponsoring us as well. Uh, Jed, uh, thanks for coming into the studio and uh, always great to have you. Welcome, Rex. Good to see you. And nice to meet Paul. Yeah, you know, uh, it's interesting. Whenever I talk to you and, and hang out with you, it always gets on to hockey. You know, we're talking ice hockey. We're talking this kind of stuff. How in the world did you get into swimming? How do you got such a successful program? You know, and how did you get this thing going? <laughs> well, I, I'm kind of the, the happy Gilmore of swim coaches. You know, I, I'm a hockey player, but I, I'm here to swim. Um, I, I actually think the two actually relate really well together as far as being able to, to work hard as a team for, for hockey and challenge yourself. And really swimming, everyone that's in your lane is your teammate as well, and they're helping you make sure you're, they're pushing you through intervals and helping you out in that regard. So the two actually play really well off of each other. But um, I've been coaching here on the Central Coast for 12 years with Puma and uh, have loved every minute of it. And when you get an opportunity to work with a, a variety of different athletes and a special athlete like Zach, it's it's a special experience. Yeah, it's an interesting thing you say there because we've talked about this a lot. You know, when you think about swimming, even sometimes track and field, and we talked to, to Paul about that uh, a few weeks ago with the decathletes. I think you think individual. What's the individual's time? What the individual do? Talk about what makes Puma a little bit different in your strategy as a coach to bring in some of those team elements, some of those character elements, and how maybe some of your – uh, swimmers can learn from uh, an elite swimmer like Zach, but how Zach can learn some things from some of those other uh, more novice swimmers along the way and how you're integrating that to the system. 
Yeah, excellent question. And I think the important thing to, to remember is, you know, Zach's only 16. He's at the Olympic trials. Essentially, he's really set himself up to, to swim at the collegiate level with, with some of your top tier programs. And it's important for the younger kids in our program to realize, well, he started off as a, a 9, 10-year-old kid in age group swimming just like they are. And uh, the big thing is the team element is where they're helping each other out in practice, pushing each other, and really trying to establish goals. That's the big thing. Um, motivation, our, our goal as a coaching staff is to provide an environment that really promotes intrinsic motivation. And so Zach's a great example of that where I call it like a stubborn persistence um, where he swims really well, maybe in a meet, and he wants more. And it's, you know, something that I think about, like, you know, another hockey example, Wayne Gretzky, his dad built a rink out back. And basically, Wayne grew up his childhood playing hockey all the time. And it's that stubborn persistence to just want to practice and get better and have goals. And that's what we find with our program with the most success is, you know, kids that define their own success. And our coaching staff is, is on board with trying to create that environment where the kids want to be there. Intrinsic motivation, is that is that where you put them on a boat, drive them out about five miles, drop them off, and be like, hey, shores east, I'll see you guys on the beach. Is that is that kind of how it works? That's exactly how it works. And, nice. you know, I, I'd, I'd love to see if maybe we can go out with you, Paul, and we'll see if you can get you back see a to lot shore. Of, you see a lot of doggy paddling is what you see. I'd look real good for about 10 or, 10 or 15 strokes, and then I'd start cramping up. Oh, please, let me back in the boat. <laughs> You know, Paul. Paul. He's had a rough month this last month. You know, he's been challenged to a rollerblading. I know. Contest I, got, I got a rollerblading across, across the country now. I got a fifteen hundred against Jordan. I'm going to drown and get eaten by something. I'm bait fish out there. Well, we could we could just do a real easy deal over at Kennedy Club, and have you and Zach race, and you can do any stroke you want. This, this, this is twice. I'll concede defeat before the competition even goes in the same show. This has got to be a record. Hey, we're talking to Judd Clark of Puma here on Living the Run here on ESPN 1280. That ticket. Uh, Again, guys, remember, you can find us on Facebook.com, livingtherun.com. Uh, pick up the podcast. Pick up the video. If you're missing uh, part of the show, pick it up tomorrow. We'll put it put it online there for you. Jed, one of the things I hear most about Puma, which is really a, an amazing thing to me, to have competitive swimmers like you do, is, is how much fun everybody has. Uh, it's rare that I ever hear anybody talk about the competitive side of your group. It's always, hey, Judd makes it fun. Uh, the the system is fun. We have a good time. I'm telling you, you know, I, I talk to football players, basketball players. People aren't having any fun, uh, <laughs> whether they're winning or not. You know, how how have you kind of cultivated that? Did you have a strategy going in to it? What's kind of that, that magic behind that mystery and making uh, some of these tough workouts fun? So uh, basically when I became a coach, I promised myself that I didn't want to coach the way that I was coached. And I did – more miles in the pool than I, I can ever imagine and, and went through different, definitely different levels of burnout and excitement. And everything that I learned at Cal Poly, Cal Poly getting my master's, um, really just emphasized that it's, you got to challenge the different energy systems to really perf get peak performance out of your, your swimmers. Mm. And so I wanted to kind of create that environment where maybe one day is a real challenging hard day and we finished it off with some fun relays or things like that. But uh, there's no, no problem having fun and working hard at the same time. And, and you can't take the hard work out of success. That's, uh, that's, that's incredible stuff. I mean, again, it's, uh, it, it's, we need it more on different avenues. Uh, we need it more in the health and fitness arena. It's one of the things we've talked about, Paul, a lot is, is one of the reasons people don't stick with health and fitness and not have any fun. Well, um, they set a, I think they set a big goal. I, you know, I want to lose this much weight or I want to do this. And it's this big long-term goal, but they don't have the smaller milestones along the way. And, and as well as not having the smaller milestones, they don't do things that are fun. You know, you can trick yourself into getting into shape sometimes. You know, I remember there was – uh, there were a couple times throwing jab. We'd have long jab workouts, and, and if you just focus, you know, 100% on javelin, you got to do this and you got to do this. After you know 45 minutes, it gets boring. But you turn into a little contest, like all right, we're going to set up a little target out there at 100 and whatever feet. It wasn't a hard throw, but do things technically right. See who can get the closest to the target. You know, turn it into a little competition. It took your mind off of the actual training. You still got the volume of throws in. You still got the technique in, but you weren't looking at it like it was a chore. You were looking at it like it was something fun to do. 
But um, let's bring in uh, Zach Stevens here. This is a, this is an incredible story. Local guy, Royal Grande High School, 16 years old, qualifying in the breaststroke. Zach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Zach, talk a little bit about you guys were talking during the break about goals, uh, writing down goals, putting goals all over the place. When did you start writing down goals? Um, you know, what got you to do it? How often do you write down goals? How often do you change them? How often do you read them? Uh, talk a little bit about goals that have obviously gotten you to this incredible point as such a young athlete. Well, um, goals have always been a big part of my swimming, my swimming career, and uh, they've just been always uh, ingrained in my in my mind, and um, th- it always gives me something to look forward to. And uh, I started writing goals when I was probably 11 or 12, and they just made me realize um, how how much fun it can be to to reach every one of them, and and reach that long term goal. What what were the goals coming into this season? Uh, were, were the goals already around Olympic trials? Did you have different high school goals? What was the uh, the kind of ultimate goal starting in this this season? Um, well, I qualified for trials uh, last summer, so this season was building up to trials that that was the that was the main goal and um i had high school season along the way and the the goal for high school season was was just to maintain my my technique and my and my stroke and um the look forward to the ultimate goal which is trials get, get in shape yeah. get in shape yeah. don't get hurt get to the trials yeah yeah yeah, I mean, how's the, how's the body held up then during the season? Uh, how how do you kind of work around some of that stuff? I mean, obviously you can't just go hard all year long. Uh, you have intervals. Talk to us a little bit about some of those training patterns that you guys look at. Uh, maybe your relationship a little bit about with uh, Coach Judd uh, on you guys is talking back and forth about you know raising intensity, lowering intensity, that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, beginning of the season I I started out with a little bit longer aerobic training and um, just just build that aerobic base and then uh, increase it to some more sprint work and um, yeah talking to Judd uh, about about my goals and and just those little steps along the way it just helped me out tremendously so a lot of our listeners are triathletes and I know it's not gonna it's not gonna transfer directly over uh, but what do, what advice would you have for somebody getting into swimming? Uh, I mean, I know it's a long time since you a long time since you've gotten into swimming, but uh, you know when they're just going to get started. You said your uh, dad dumped you in the pool at like two, right? Was that what, yeah. was that? Was, <laughs> was, well, <laughs> just just dropped you over the edge and, and just swim lessons at two. I mean, it, it wasn't that harsh. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> so, so, so knowing what you know now at the level that you're at, uh, what would you tell somebody in their twenties, thirties, forties? They're they're just getting ready to get started. They know how to swim. Uh, you talk you talk about goal setting, but what what would you tell them? You know, if uh, if they want to get started swimming, how would you? What would be the best way to approach it? Um, as far as goals, uh, you should definitely set goals, um, but don't don't look at the long term as much. Look at those small steps and and reach every one of them along the way, and and eventually those small steps will have an outcome, and uh, that outcome is is your long term goal. So. Now talk about this because I'm kind of picturing your house. You know, in, in the break we were we were talking about this, and it sounds like you got notes all over the house uh, potentially, and we may have kind of blown that up a little bit. But let's just you know take it for the sake of, of pinning up your goals on the house. Do we rip those goals down uh, after we reach them? Uh, how often are we going back and evaluating? When you talk about short term versus long term type of thing, uh, are we looking week by week? Are we looking practice by practice? Uh, talk about some of the some of those goals that you meet, and then how you get to writing down the next ones. Um, well, end of the season, all those goals in my house uh, posted up are. <laughs> I mean, they're 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 everywhere. So uh, <laughs> pick up your goals, dear. <laughs> it, I, I usually look at those at the end of the season, and um, I, I try not to set them too high so I don't fail. But um, yeah. I, once I reach that goal, I just post another one up, and um, yeah, 
So, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> you you, you, you know, make it all complicated, and it's very simple, <laughs> right? You make a goal, and you accomplish it. Put it on a sticky note. Put it on the fridge. Put it on the ceiling. Put it, put it everywhere, right? Always in spots where you can see it every day, stuff to continually uh, recognize what you're trying to do. Talk about what your teammates mean to you a little bit uh, when you go in there, uh, maybe high school teammates versus uh, the, uh, the club teammates there at Puma. What are, you, what are you grabbing from your teammates each day, and how do you depend on those guys to make it through those workouts? Well, uh, during a hard workout, uh, my teammates definitely – give me some motivation and they're, they're right there with me doing doing that hard set um so yeah it just helps me out mentally all the time uh having somewhere so, someone right there uh just doing the same thing you're doing now does uh I, coach makes it fun right yeah and, and, and the environment's pretty darn fun does he ever get after you um sometimes yeah i mean there, there's those hard days and and uh I got to go fast and practice, and and that's it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's always it's always uh, the goal is to make it fun. Yeah, <laughs> S- stick around. We're gonna hear more from Zach Stevens. This is Olympic uh, hopeful hitting Olympic trials as a 16 year old in the breaststroke. Uh, incredible stuff. Stick around so that we hear a little bit more in just moments. You're listening to Living the Run on ESPN Radio 1280 The Ticket. Since 1929, Standard Process has been dedicated to providing the highest quality whole food supplements. Their philosophy is simple. To provide nutrients as they are found in nature. Today, scientists are finding more and more evidence demonstrating the benefits of whole food nutrients over high-dose synthetic vitamins. Standard Process's unique products are sold through healthcare professionals who are trained in using whole food nutrition as the first line of defense for the body. Visit www.standardprocess.com for more information or to find a Standard Process healthcare practitioner near you. Hey guys, Paul Tarek from Living the Run here. As a former Olympian, there is only one place myself and fellow athletes go when it comes to chiropractic care on the Central Coast. With four chiropractors in the clinic, Slow Wellness Center is the largest, most comprehensive group of docs in San Luis Obispo County. I began seeing Dr. Rex Stevens back in 2005 for spinal adjustments to help maximize my performance, minimize my injury, and allow me to compete at my best. When the difference between a win and a loss can be just a fraction of an inch, perfect alignment in all joints is essential. One of the great things about the team at Slow Wellness is no matter where I had an issue, whether it was my spine, my foot, knee, wrist, or shoulder, they were always able to help. This team, made up of Dr. Rex and Molly Stevens, Dr. Sachs and Dr. Bandolo, is sure to help you reach your health and fitness goals, too. If it's chiropractic care you need, go where I go, Slow Wellness Center. Check them out at slowwellness.com or call 543-8688. The ultimate choice for sports massage in Slow County, Peak Performance. Conveniently located at Slow Wellness Center, just blocks from Cal Poly, is ready to assist you to reach your personal best. Calling all athletes and fitness enthusiasts. If you're ready to start alleviating symptoms by addressing the true problems, if you are seeking efficient and effective body work, then you can count on Peak Performance. Nagging injury, losing the bounce in your step, pain or tightness keeping you from training hard and reaching your goals? Raise your standards, raise your expectations, Call Peak Performance, 543-8688. Puma Aquatics Team offers year-round swim programming for novice, recreational, and competitive swimmers. For 16 years, Puma has developed some of the fastest swimmers on the Central Coast, as well as the nation. Puma has three convenient locations to choose from, providing programming for all of San Luis Obispo County. Puma offers swim assessments for new swimmers on Tuesdays and Thursdays at the Slow Kennedy Club, Atascadero Kennedy Club, and Arroyo Grande High School. For more information about Puma Aquatics, check out pumaswim.org. Join the Puma Pride and challenge yourself to reach new levels in your swimming. Puma Aquatics, where pride, passion, and persistence pay off. This is really cool, Dad. Yep, nothing better than camping out under the stars. You think there's any bears out here? (laughs) I don't think we have to worry about that. Look, there's the Big Dipper. Wow, cool. At Four Seasons Outfitters, they can help you create an outdoor family adventure. Hey, can we try out my new fishing pool tomorrow? Sure. Hey, want to roast another marshmallow? Oh, yeah. For camping and hiking equipment, for fishing and hunting gear, Four Seasons is your hometown outdoor outfitter. Did you and Grandpa go camping when you were little? We sure did. Did you see any bears? Nope, no bears. You'll find backpacks and tents, freshwater and deep sea fishing equipment, campfire cooking supplies, guns and ammo, everything you'll need for your next outdoor adventure. 
Hi, guys. Hi, honey. Oh, hi, Mom. So how are my two campers doing? Do you, do you want me to leave the porch light on? Um, maybe, just in case there's a bear. Even if it's in your own backyard. Four Seasons Outfitters, your outdoor adventure headquarters for more than 25 years. 432 High Cara, San Luis Obispo. We're back with Living the Run. Back with Zach Stevens, Olympic trials hopeful in the breaststroke, along with his coach, Judd Clark from Puma Aquatics. <laughs> During the break, apparently there's some listeners here listening, tuning in to you, some guys you swam with maybe. <laughs> Quick shout out to those guys. Yeah, uh, they're swimming a hard set right now in, in AG, so uh, <laughs> just want to tell them good luck on their set. <laughs> hey, no sweating going on here in the studio. Yeah, he's this looking, is, he's uh, looking comfortable and cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I've never seen it. Probably at, it's probably lowest your heart rate's been in a long time, huh, Zach? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, one thing that's always bugged me about a little bit about swimming, and I, I got I to gotta talk about this, is, is that... It, it always seems like they mess around either with the pool depths, with the temperatures, with these different suits. And I'm telling you, it was crazy in the last Olympics. The guy who's coming in sixth place in a race is still better than the world record, you know, from the from the the year before. It was just kind of a kind of crazy stuff. What have they done to start to kind of bring that back to reality and just get it back to hardcore swimming? Well, there's yeah, there's that whole tech suit uh, thing going on in 2008. And uh, FINA, the the World Swimming Organization, um, they they made those suits illegal for for the sport. So um, now it's just they're they're just trying to bring it back to to the swimmers, not not the equipment that they're using. Now are they, is it going to be asterisks next to those world records? Uh, now are they going to start from the 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 old sets where they went to uh, you know the the regular suits and just get in and and swim? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I think I think those world records still stand, but there, there's been I think there's been a couple world records that have been broken without the suits. Talk about your strategy going in here to the Olympic trials. It's your first one. We had Jordan Hasse on earlier from University of Oregon. And again, if you've missed any parts of these interviews, check us out on LivingTheRun.com or Facebook to get the podcast tomorrow. Uh, she's gone through one. This is her second. This is going to be your first, but probably first of many. You know, how do you approach this coming in uh, in comparison to other meets that you've had throughout the year? Man, I'm I'm just going in trying to keep my nerves down. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm just trying to go in for the experience and. Um... Maybe drop a few places at the trials, uh, but yeah, mainly for the experience, and and maybe next time around I'll be, I'll be uh, top top ranked in, in my event. What what events are you doing? Tell the listeners what events you're doing. The ones to look for you in, look for your times, and talk about the spacing between your races on on the dates. Um, well, on the, on June 25th I swim the 100 meter breaststroke, and uh, June 28th I swim the 200 meter breaststroke. Um, Yep, so those are the dates. Three, three days, and, and it's just a, you know, is it just a one-and-done type of deal, or is there like uh, what Jordan was talking about where they got multiple heats and then you qualify to the next heat and then to the next heat? Yeah, there's, there's prelims, and then top 16 go on to make semifinals, and then top eight of the semifinals go on to make the finals. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll make the semifinals. I mean, that, that's my goal right now. I was going to say the post-it can't just say show up at the trials. The post-it's got to say make it out of the prelims or something, right? Yeah, definitely. I need I need a little uh, bigger goal than that. Yeah. <laughs> Get on my flight, you know. Like, yeah, it's not the goal. Hey, pay attention, uh, listeners, to Zach Stevens. Watch what he's doing. Uh, Zach, this is a great story. I wanted to uh, ask Judd, your coach, one one thing, one uh, one more time. Give us your favorite Zach Stevens moment over the years. Uh, I know you've you've seen him. Uh, you know, for multiple years now, it's not just a first year thing. Give it, give us a good moment, a uh, funny moment, uh, a proud moment as a coach, something on Zach. Okay. Well, there's, there's plenty of races that stick out in mind, but I think, um, as a 12 year old, I was with Zach and we were at a big Southern California championship meet in Las Vegas of all places. And, um, Southern California swimming has some of the best swimmers in the world, really. And Zach was in the, the hundred yard breaststroke. And one of his kind of nemesis friends from another team uh, had kind of always been right there with Zach or maybe just a little bit ahead <clears throat> and was a little bit older than Zach. And uh, the 100-yard breaststroke final came in, and Zach was with them. They were both swimming right with each other. 
And on the final turn, I could just tell Zach just had a great pull down, and there was something that just clicked in Zach that was like, this is my race. And he just blew past this guy that had kind of been one of his nemesis, you know, and uh, won the race. And we were so excited. Zach was so excited. And uh, we actually missed his next race. We were so excited. <laughs> so we had to talk our way to getting him back into the next event. But it was, uh, it was an exciting moment and kind of an embarrassing moment at the same time for me as a coach. But uh, I think that was the moment I knew, and based on his time at that, at that time, that, you know, in, in four years' time as a 16-year-old, he had a legitimate shot at qualifying for Olympic trials. What's so interesting uh, about Zach here is is that uh, you know you, you're talking about he's been successful since a young age. He's been top one or two, I think you said nationally uh, in this breaststroke since ten years old. But uh, as we sit here, Paul, you know, a humble kid. You can tell he just wants more. He's he's striving for more, and you know that there's more in him uh, mentally. Uh, cool stuff. What do you remember about that moment in that race? I, I remember hopping out of the pool, and I was so excited. I, I, I ran over to, to Judd and uh, <laughs> just completely forgot about my, my next race. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, the good thing, it sounds like you got three days to remember at the Olympic yeah. trials, so we shouldn't, we shouldn't miss that, uh, that, that next race on yeah, the 28th, right? Yeah, there's a little buffer or something there. <laughs> Post it note in the hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Judd, tell, tell us real quick uh, before we go a little bit uh, more about Puma. How do people get involved? This is clearly the program to be involved in when it comes to swimming. Uh, no question about it. Not only competitive wise, but just a darn fun environment. You guys are caring about not only athletes, but about character, building these kids up. Um, you know, how do people get more involved? What kind of ages? You know, tell us about yeah, the program. Yeah, so our program, actually, our, our largest part of our program is our, our novice and recreation program. And so we're really, even though we're a competitive swim team, we're open to all levels of swimmers. And it's basically kind of like a three-tiered system where we have recreation novice and then a competitive group and then a senior group. Um, so people can, can check us out on any Tuesday, Thursday at practice. Um, go to pumaswim.org to check out practice times. And uh, don't hesitate to, to contact us through the website or, or give me a call and, and we can get people going. That's great. So you heard it, pumaswim.org, pumaswim.org. Again, you don't have to be uh, an elite swimmer. Uh, novice or taken. Uh, again, this is, this is more than just about competition. It's about character. It's about getting involved. It's about getting active. It's about getting moving. Zach Stevens, good luck. Do good. We want an update from you after the trials. Uh, thank you so much for coming into studio and joining us. Judd, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. When we return, Paul and I will wrap up the show. Tips and takeaways. You're listening to Living the Run on ESPN Radio 1280 The Ticket. Folks, when it comes to the health of my teeth, I will not compromise and neither should you. It's time you go where my wife and I go. Go see Dr. Ryan Ross. I get it. Not everyone loves a dentist, and heck, even a few of you out there are scared to death of these offices. Bad past experiences? Well, you ever had a bad haircut? How about a bad meal somewhere? You didn't stop getting your haircut, and you certainly didn't stop eating, so stop ignoring your teeth. Dr. Ross's gentle approach, calming demeanor, and office full of upbeat staff puts your dental fears to rest. Conveniently located in a great little house on Marsh Street downtown, Dr. Ross's office exudes the highest level of professionalism, mixed with an atmosphere much like your own home. Look, nobody's in a rush here. It's not a get-em-in, get-em-out atmosphere. Every time I'm in Dr. Ross's office, it's like I'm the only guy that matters. No distractions, just full focus on my oral health. If you're interested in the highest quality in dental care and want to walk out of the office every time with a smile, call Dr. Ryan Ross today, 541-5800. Hey guys, Paul Tarek from Living the Run here. As a former Olympian, there is only one place myself and fellow athletes go when it comes to chiropractic care on the Central Coast. With four chiropractors in the clinic, the Slow Wellness Center is the largest, most comprehensive group of docs in San Luis Obispo County. I began seeing Dr. Rex Stevens back in 2005 for spinal adjustments to help maximize my performance, minimize my injury, and allow me to compete at my best. When the difference between a win and a loss can be just a fraction of an inch, perfect alignment in all joints is essential. One of the great things about the team at Slow Wellness is no matter where I had an issue, whether it was my spine, my foot, knee, wrist, or shoulder, they were always able to help. This team, made up of Dr. Rex and Molly Stevens, Dr. Sachs and Dr. Bandolo, is sure to help you reach your health and fitness goals, too. 
If it's chiropractic care you need, go where I go, Slow Wellness Center. Check them out at slowwellness.com or call 543-8688. My name is Chris Randolph, and as a local track and field Olympic hopeful, I've been seeing Brian Quigley at Slow Wellness Center to help me with injury recovery during my season. Brian has not only helped me with some very extensive injuries, but has also educated me on the specifics of how my body moves when I compete. His knowledge and touch has helped me achieve personal best in my competition and has also helped me in injury prevention. Becoming a wellness patient of his has helped me stop my injuries before they start, making time spent recovering shorter, leaving more time spent training for my goals. From injury prevention to wellness, Brian understands the patient and holistically helps them achieve their personal health-related goals. So check out Brian Quigley at peakperformancesLO.com and find him on Facebook and comment a response to this ad and get a complimentary 60-minute massage. Puma Aquatics Team offers year-round swim programming for novice, recreational, and competitive swimmers. For 16 years, Puma has developed some of the fastest swimmers on the Central Coast as well as the nation. Puma has three convenient locations to choose from, providing programming for all of San Luis Obispo County. Puma offers swim assessments for new swimmers on Tuesdays and Thursdays at the Slow Kennedy Club, a Tascadero Kennedy Club and Arroyo Grande High School. For more information about Puma Aquatics, check out pumaswim.org. Join the Puma Pride and challenge yourself to reach new levels in your swimming. Puma Aquatics, where pride, passion, and persistence pay off. We're back with Living the Run. Man, those guys were great, Paul. Uh, just fun interviews today. Jordan Hasse, always a ton of fun. Uh, I could just picture her smile the whole time we talked to her. But man, Zach Stevens, uh, impressive, impressive kid. Uh, the humility, the the humbleness, setting goals at ten years old. I, you know, <laughs> I wasn't setting goals at ten years old. I'm not even sure if I knew what a goal was. You're barely setting them now. <laughs> you barely setting yeah. goals now. Well, I can tell you, I don't have the post-it notes or the uh, <laughs> the cards all you, over. You the, have a uh, wife telling you what your goals are. <laughs> no. Sorry, Molly, you're a wonderful woman. <laughs> you know, we were during the break, Paul, we were talking a little bit. Just talk real quickly about uh, some of that advice you were giving Zach there towards the end uh, about nerves and anxiety. What, what were you experiencing in your uh, first Olympic trials uh, there, and what did you perceive oh, from the other dude, athletes? Cold as ice, man. Cold. <laughs> no, it was, uh, you know, the thing is you go to these things, and uh, everybody's worried about their performance. They're worried about how, are they going to do good, are they going to do bad, what's their, you know, what's their mark going to be, what's their height going to be. And, uh, you know, the thing is, the sooner you realize that everyone there is just as nervous as you are, the easier it's going to get. Great, great uh, tip there uh, for Zach, and I know he appreciated that from a, a veteran athlete. Uh, no question, as I look at this thing today, uh, my tip and takeaway from it is, is continue to have fun. You know, uh, Puma Aquatics, Judd is setting up a very fun environment there. You can tell that Jordan is having fun uh, in her races. Zach, it sounds like, is having fun, reaching goals, meeting goals. Uh, having fun is a, is a big part of this process. Next week, we will check in. Uh, Chris Randolph, he's got the decathlon this week. He was on the show. Check out USATF.org. Org. Uh, Zach Stevens will be competing next Monday and Thursday, which will be cool. Um, who big, knows? Big show next Wednesday. We're going to have some Olympic updates. But yeah, big show. Western States this weekend. That ultra marathon, 100 miler, pretty big deal. We're going to have a couple people in studio next week who are participating in that. Kind of crazy stuff. But uh, next week, come join us. Come live bold. Come live the run. <laughs>